Welcome to Life Astrologer with me, Anna Isabel, and I am a psychological astrologer. And I'm delighted today to have with me Lionel Friedberg, who is the author of Forever in My Veins. Welcome, Lionel. Thank you so much, Anna. It's really a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for having me on your show. Well, you know, it's funny because I've been reading your, your book and loving it. Um, and what is very obvious is your relationship with the more mystical side of life right from very early on and i look at your chart and lo and behold um i see a moon in pisces which anyone who watches this channel regularly is going to know that that is the sign we most associate with mysticism. Mm. So that's a, a very important thing because it's almost like it's instinctive to you. And there's more because you are a Virgo and Virgo is normally very practical, um, curious, but need, needing a lot of evidence for everything, very analytical. And I dare say there's that that's part of who you are too. Yeah. But almost all of that Virgo is sitting in the 12th house, which is, again, the, the most mystical of houses. Really? So oh. you have, um, the sun conjunct Jupiter there. You have sun conjunct Mercury there, Chiron there too. So it's almost as though this life of yours yeah. was up for you to discover the more esoteric side of life. Does that make sense? It makes, it makes total sense. And I have to tell you this, uh, I don't know anything about astrology. And so I'm, I'm coming to this with complete ignorance, but everything you've said so far makes perfect sense to me. And I have been, as you said, insatiably curious ever since I was, you know, maybe three years old. Yeah. About well, things that lie beyond the horizon, things that lie beyond the, uh, the domain of, of normality, if you like, you know, things are not what they seem at all to me. I know there's always more beyond the veil and I, I seek it out. And there's the other thing, of course, is that your, your world is the world of film. Yes. And, and Pisces and 12th house are also the, associated with film. So I would say that you have been living your, your purpose, so to speak, because your a breathing embodiment of your chart. Mm. So the other thing that struck me is this fortuitous um, Sun-Jupiter conjunction because Jupiter is about travel. Yeah. It's about explore, exploration. And that's, that's everything that you are, isn't it? Pretty much, yeah, I guess, yeah. So maybe it might be nice to hear from you a little bit um, about your relationship then with the this mystical world and the travels that you, you've embarked on. Well, you know, I think, as I've, as I've just said, um, I have always known that there's more than what meets the eye, always. And um, in terms of being a filmmaker, particularly in my life as a documentary filmmaker. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're given a subject, whether it's a story of how a matchbox is made or how the world works or about the Voyager spacecraft mission to the outer planets, which is, by the way, a show that I've done for television. Um, I know that there's always more and I, and I need to peel away those onion skin layers constantly until I get to the core of whatever it is that the subject is about be it a person or a pony or a petunia, I've got to know what lies at the core, the center of things. And I will go to any length to get there. 
And, you know, I, I just find that um, the world in which we live, and in fact, the universe in which we live, is, is an absolutely fascinating and amazing place. And we know so little about it that there is so much more to explore. It is a constant voyage of exploration for me. And I like to bring that to every film I make. And I like the audience. I try to imbue, um, to, to imbue the subject matter with a feeling that the audience is going on this voyage with me and that they are learning more, no matter how boring the subject may be. And I've made very boring subjects about very, uh, films about very boring subjects, but you've got to make it amazing. There's something amazing in whatever it is that you are dealing with, you know, be it society or ethnography or science or whatever it is. And I need to know that there is more up there because there is so much more, you know, and I've made films about life after death. I've done a, a wonderful show called Beyond Death years ago for television. It was extraordinary meeting. And this wasn't an ooga booga thing about, you know, people sitting in dark rooms doing seances. This was with, was with scientists at various institutions from Princeton University to the Monroe Institute in Virginia and places like that. And it was the science for me, it was the, the, the brief was go and find out what happens to consciousness after the demise of the physical body. And so I thought, wow, that's just up straight up my street. And, you know, I've had personal experiences of that with my own family, with my parents, by the way, both of them. Um, so I know there's more and, um, you know, this is my, this has been my journey and I've always wanted to share that, which is one of the reasons why I wrote this book that you uh, were talking about earlier, Forever in My Veins, is about wanting to share that um, sense of adventure and discovery, which is basically denotes what my life is about. Listening to you, I can hear your chart in different ways. And the first thing that struck me is the ability to take a detail and then create a large story out of it. So here we have this, the Virgo eye for detail, and then the Jupiterian ability to turn it into something big um, and extraordinary. That's the, the first about and then the second was as you were talking about the need to share um the story this the need to communicate it so this yeah. is sun mercury conjunction so this is this triple conjunction of the sun jupiter and mercury all uh -huh. um together it's also the other thing that struck me was how having Chiron on the ascendant, your book begins with discovery that you are ill. And then it is the story of how you went to find healing and what led you to look for healing in those areas. So tell us a little bit about that because there's something here about Chiron in in Virgo, conjuncture ascendant in <coughs> excuse me in the twelfth house, which means that healing has to be a mind, body, and soul type of healing. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, um, and I say this to a, a lot of people who are suffering from various illnesses and whatever else. And I say, you know, the allopathic world, Western medicine, if you like, does not have all the answers. It looks at, if you go and see an eye specialist, it's about your eye. If you go and see an ENT person, it's about your ear, your nose, and your throat. But very, very few people in Western medicine take the whole of you. They don't see you as a whole. I, you know, I don't want to go there as an eye or as, as a kidney, which is my, what my disease was about. With my, I, you know, I'm, not, I'm not just a kidney. I'm a whole individual. And what about, and, 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 it's, and it's to do with also, it's to do with maybe past lives have a lot to play into this as well. So there is more to be considered when one looks at a patient suffering from an illness. What really lies at the core of that illness? It's not just 
the organ itself that, that 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 there's something wrong with that there's there has to be a reason why it has gone wrong i mean in my 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 case it was my my autoimmune system that was turning against me and i wanted to know why nobody gave me the answer to that but i'll tell you an interesting thing about 18 months ago just before the covid uh, pandemic hit i went to taiwan to talk to a, a wonderful group of people um, there's a marvelous woman there by the name of Master Ching Hai, and she practices uh, a, a school of yoga, uh, of, of meditation. And uh, they have a, a television station called Supreme Master Television, which is around the world on the, on the web. And they talk about alternative healing and alternative all sorts of things, alternative ways of eating, um, alternative ways of looking at the world. And they want to share this with the world. That's what this network is all about. And this amazing woman does that. And I was asked to go there to talk to her because I'd done a lot of work with them when they had a, uh, their studios here in Los Angeles. It's now all been shifted to Taipei, which is where her base is. Her ashram is there. And I was invited to talk to them. And when I was there, she said, you know, you're not well. And I said, yeah, I'm not. And she said to me, um, we need to fix that. And I said, well, you know, how do we do that? And she said, well, once this conference is over, I want you to come back to Taipei. I want you to come back to Taiwan. And we want to help you. Here. And I was totally open to that. Uh, you know, I've tried Ayurvedic medicine as well and all sorts of other things, in addition to Western medicine. And I do have access to some of the best doctors in the world right here in LA. Um, but it wasn't enough. And so I was going to take her up on that offer and I was going to go back to Taiwan. And I wasn't interested how long it was going to take. I was quite prepared to go and live on a mud floor uh, you know, in, in the ashram and see how we could go about this because I implicitly and absolutely believed in what she was saying. This was the way to go. She said, you know, we need to, we need to meditate. We need to go into the depths of your soul and find out what this is all about. And I was going to go back and then the pandemic hit and I couldn't go back. And the next thing I get from her was she's an extraordinarily generous, amazingly caring person. She wrote back and she said, well, in that case, if you can't come back, I want you to call my personal physician here in Taiwan, and he will try to help you remotely. And I did that. And I met this incredible man by the name of Y Chen. And this man is Oxford trained, but also practices Asian medicine, as well as meditation in the in this in, in this in this world of, uh, of of what this this woman founded years ago um and it's been an extraordinary experience and thank goodness for that guy because together with him and my western doctors i think i have you know managed to salvage a lot of my life uh thanks to him as well as going back to the traditional healers in africa which is a lot of what my book is about um, you know, the spirit of Africa runs through my veins. I was born there. Africa is part of the pulse of who I am. And that's why I call the book Forever in My Veins. And I went back to Africa to try and find healing. It helped a great deal, but, you know, the, the illness kept recurring. And uh, thank goodness for this man, because now I think I have found a way to just hold on. It's like having a Band-Aid, like an elastoplast, if you like, you know, to keep going. And um, so... One has to dip into all sorts of alternative ways, you know, whether, whether it's in the UK, you know, the NHS or whether it's here in, in, in the medical system in, in, in America, which, which is awful, but if you can afford it, it's great. But unfortunately, not everyone can uh, have that capabilities. It's not enough. You've got to go more. You've got to find alternatives. You've got to find other ways of doing that. And if I didn't meditate every morning and every night as I do, I would not be able to uh, to deal with the situation that I've been dealing with for all of these years. And I know that, you know, there is so much more to the world. When I see these, these traditional herbalists in Africa who live in a mud hut, don't even speak English, they wear a grass skirt and they go out into the, into the wilds of nowhere and they come back with a bunch of leaves and berries, barks and herbs and whatever else, and they concoct medications. And then they call upon the ancestors and they use that as medication for their clients, their patients, if you like. And that works. And it doesn't make any sense because when I talk to my doctors about that, they think I'm insane. You've been actually trying that. And I said, yes, of course I've been trying that. Absolutely. Because what you have to offer me is only half the story. 
and maybe they have the other half. And so I think it's terribly important for us to dig deeper, to go beyond the norm, um, you know, and, and normal Western institutions, be they universities or medical schools, or whatever else, do not have all the answers as amazing as they are. And as amazing as modern medicine is, which it absolutely is today, it's not everything. And I think a lot also has to do with diet. And I think the diet plays fundamentally into who and what we are. That old saying, you are what you eat, is absolutely true. I have been a vegan for years. And I, I started by being a vegetarian. So I was a vegetarian for about 65 years. And for the last 20 years, I have been vegan. And I absolutely know that what one eats and, and the kind of food you put into your body plays such an enormous role in who you are, not only physically, but mentally and emotionally and psychologically and spiritually, because if we are going to ingest pain and suffering and the sort of horrors that are suffered by animals in the, uh, in the industrialized agricultural world of today, we're taking in all sorts of horrible dark energy and it's, it's not healthy for the body. It's not healthy for the soul. It's not healthy for your psyche. And I think that a lot of people have said to me, um, you know, you, you look amazing for, for your illness. And I said, yeah, because my diet plays an enormous role in that. And I cannot emphasize that strongly enough for people. You know, be very, very careful about what you put in, into your body. Don't ingest negativity. Don't ingest suffering. Because be it the dairy industry or the meat industry or whatever it is, you are taking in all the suffering of those poor beings who have, you know, um, undergone all sorts of horrible things in order to provide you with what's on your plate. Don't do that. And I think that makes an enormous difference. It's interesting because Virgo, if there's a sign that is associated with the health aspects of, of eating and nutrition, it's Virgo. Oh, really? And if there was a sign that was going to be talking about the spiritual food, it would be Pisces. And so you have the embodiment there of the two as you're, you're speaking. And the other thing that struck me is that your illness seems to coincide with just with the transit of Neptune to your moon, which sets kind of a, a chain reaction in your chart um, involving the other planets in Virgo and not least of which is Chiron, which I mentioned um, earlier as being linked with healing and, and wounds. And, and so it's one of the characteristic things about Neptune um, when it's linked with illnesses it's like it's it's a mystery yeah. it's a mystery illness that you know nobody can explain and that could well mean that the 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 root of it lies in something other than just a physical malfunction yes Absolutely. So I think that that when you were talking and I I realized the time frame that you're speaking of, I could see that this is the opposition to Mercury conjunction to the moon and 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 the Chiron and it's a phase and that's why you were saying that it was recurring yeah. and and so needing to to deal with it even though it was recurring because it's it takes time. This is not a, a fast process. This is a, a, a slow process of healing. Uh, no. And the immune system as well. Well, it, oh, and of course, um, the moon is in your, your sixth house, um, the house that we associate with illness. So um, it means that there's a sensitivity there whenever there's a, a transit to it. 
and in this case it's Neptune which is the ruler of Pisces anyway and so it's triggered something there within your immune system um, I would suggest that perhaps it might be worth also considering um, you talked about reincarnation and past lives. Yes. Because the 12th house is involved in this, it might be worth exploring that area as well. Yeah. Because it could be that there's something unresolved here which needs to be addressed. I, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I really do feel that. So I, I think that that would be a, a good a good thing to explore. Um, I haven't mentioned Uranus, which um, is part of this picture. Um, it's sitting in your ninth house, and the ninth house is to do with it's to do with this, I guess, meaning, meaning and looking for a, a way to, to process everything that's been learned about existence, which is why it's a house that's often associated with religion. But religion is, I think, a limited way of encompassing this. And it strikes me that with Uranus there, Uranus wants to break through limits. It's about freedom. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's about exploring. I think exploring through the other, perhaps, it, because Uranus often is the outsider. And yeah. I, it's, it, I think it's interesting too, because you started your career behind the camera. What are you doing behind the camera? You're observing. Yeah. And you're being, you're the outsider looking in, um, recording events as you, as you see them. And reading your book, it, that's very clear, that, that feeling of being somebody who's standing outside observing in order to tell the story. Yeah. Um, and so there's something here about needing to experience as much as you can about the world in order to learn about something deeper, a meaning. And at times, well, it's, it, let's put it this way. It's not always easy being an outsider, is it? Not at all, yeah. So yeah. how do you relate to what I, I've just said? No, you're absolutely right. You know, um, using the viewfinder as my method of connecting with the world around me, there are two ways of doing this. Depending on the subject, I have often felt that, oh my goodness, what's happening in my viewfinder, I am part of that world. It connects you to that world. But if the subject matter is not so savory or dark, or violent, it is also a way of distancing yourself. It's like, a, it's like it, it, it puts a, a filter between you and the world. And I, and I use the viewfinder in both ways. Heaven forbid, if I open my other eye, I'll see it in reality. I keep that eye shut, tightly shut if I don't like what's going on in the finder. And I will only use the viewfinder eye because although I'm seeing what's happening, it doesn't put me in, into the middle of it all. Whereas if I open this eye, I'm back in reality. And yet, if things are wonderful and amazing and marvelous, and it's, 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 it's a dance or it's amazing scene or whatever the situation may be, it connects you with that. So it's a double pronged thing. I can use it in both, you know, and always have. I, I have filmed things that would be absolutely terrifying to see in real life. And it's okay because I'm, 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 putting, on a, I'm putting it onto film and, and I'm, I'm seeing it. Um, but then there are times when, I feel such infinite joy with what I'm seeing that, you know, I like to take my head away and look at it and feel part of all of that. Um, so it's, it's, it, it goes both ways. Yeah, I can see that. 
it's yes, indeed. And it's what's interesting is that you just said that when you want to experience it, then you you come away from from mm. it so that you can actually experience it because yeah. that viewfinder it it, um, it it is after all a lens. Yes, um, exactly. a filter, yeah. if you like. Um, that's there. It's. I'm just looking at the North Node in your chart, which is about, let's say, purpose. Yeah. And I say that it being in Cancer and you with such a strong 12th house and the moon in, in Pisces, that there's something here in this life about caring, mm -hmm. about learning to care and I think that that's why you, you clearly have a great deal of empathy for everything. You have an empathy for humanity. You have an empathy for nature, animals. It's everything. And I think that's that North Node in Cancer. You clearly are here to use that empathy. What do you feel you've used? How do you feel you've used that empathy? It's interesting to hear you say that because what what drives me uh and I've, I've said this often to my children um um my firm belief is that you know what's it all about why are we here you know is the big question and and, and people ask you that and, you know what what is one answer to that and i said well you know as far as i'm concerned we've all been here many many times and we will be here or in other places many many times this this wheel goes on and on and on until the journey is complete and i don't think we have any conception of what the end of the journey is about but that's not the point the point is the journey continues and there is a process of learning so what are we learning what are we here for you know we aren't here to acquire physical um, 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 uh, objects and and uh, and materialism it's not about that it's to have an experience and you've got to learn and I think that for me, the purpose of me being here is to learn two things. And you've used the word empathy. That's the number one. And the other thing is compassion. I think the overriding thing in actual fact of why I am here in this lifetime is to learn what compassion is all about. You have to feel compassion in, in every sense for anything that is either alive or has sentience or has consciousness and make a connection with it. And as I end my book, I don't know whether you've got to that part yet, whether you've got to the end of the book. At the end of it, I, 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 I describe what I believe is a grid, a field, if you like, that unites us all on a cosmic level. We're all part of this cosmic field. And it's, we are all connected to that. And how do we learn that? And that is stage by stage, life by life, incarnation by incarnation. And bit by bit, you fill in those little gaps and those holes, and you actually are tying up, you're tying yourself into that grid, on a, on, you know, on 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 a level that 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 unites us all, whether it's uh, whether it's an alien being or a snail, it doesn't matter. You know, we're all connected. So I'm smiling because I am giving a talk this evening for the Astrological Lodge of London, which yes. is water and the thirst for oneness uh -huh. and in it i feature charts of a few people with strong piscean energy as examples of how that energy is associated with oneness and yeah. here you have another shining example of uh -huh. exactly what i'm talking about and i think you're absolutely right. And it's, it's a very natural thing. And as we've been talking about Pisces, we can think of salmon returning to their place of birth in order to spawn the full circle and coming back to that. So I think um, this is a lovely place on which to end our conversation today and i just want to, to, to um the book once again is forever in my veins 
And Lionel, I want to thank you very much for joining us on Life Astrology today. Well, Anna, it's been an absolute pleasure and a privilege. Thank you so much. It's been great being with you. And thank you all for watching. And if you, if you want to watch all of the interviews on the channel, do remember to subscribe because then you can catch up with any that you have missed. Until next week, goodbye.